4.5 billion years ago, a young planet Earth set alone in the universe. No moon to be found, until one day, a young protoplanet named Thea came hurtling towards the planet. Thea, not much larger than the planet we know today as Mars, crashed into Earth surely, wiping out all life as we know it. But the resulting impact is the reason we have the moon today. Welcome back guys, today we're going to be going over some facts about the moon and afterwards we're going to play around with the simulation a little bit. First off, the moon is what is known as a satellite of its planet, so the moon orbits the earth. And that makes the moon basically a satellite of the earth. Out of all the known satellites in our solar system, the moon is the fifth largest, but is the largest satellite in relative size to its orbiting planet. The moon is one quarter the size of the Earth, and there is no other planet or planet that has a moon that size. The moon is actually also larger than Pluto, which is considered a dwarf planet. The moon has an average diameter of 1,079 square kilometers. We often think of the moon as very close to us, and in the vast distance of the space, that is true. But in reality, it's not nearly as close as you think. What you are seeing here is not actually the moon, that's the planet Mercury. And as I zoom out here, you have Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and here is the moon. The distance shown here between the Earth and the moon is approximately the moon's farthest distance in its orbit from us. Because the moon does not have a completely circular orbit, it's more of elliptical. Which means its distance from the Earth will vary from time to time. Distance shown here is 39,300 kilometers. And as you can see, that is far enough that we can fit every single planet in our solar system in between the Earth and moon. Between each planet, there's an average distance of 1,600 kilometers which is about half the diameter of the moon itself. Earth orbits the sun one time every 24 hours. So one day on Earth is equal to 24 hours, while one day on the moon is equal to 29 Earth days. That is because the moon spins much slower than the Earth does. Because of that slow spin of the moon is the reason why we only ever see 57% of the moon. The moon is not really tidally locked, but it is, to an extent, tidally locked to the Earth, which means we only ever see the one side of it. The moon is actually not completely spherical, it is more of an egg shape, and that is because of the Earth's immense gravitational pull onto the moon. The side facing the Earth, the side here, is more flat, and that's because it is being pulled by the gravity of, by Earth's gravity harder than the back side of it, which in turn leaves the front of the moon as more of a flat plains type area, while the back side of the moon here that we have never been able to see from Earth is full of vast mountains and craters. Gravity between the Earth and the moon work very well together with where they are. The moon's gravitational pull on the Earth does quite a lot to help sustain life on the planet for us. As m many of you more than likely know, if you go to an ocean, the waves will come in and out. There's high tide and low tide. That is caused by the moon's gravitational pull on the Earth. It causes the oceans to rise and drop back down slowly over time. But that gravitational pull also affects many other aspects of the Earth. That is one of the reasons we have tectonic plate activity is because of the moon's gravitational pull on Earth. That is also a reason our days are as long as they are. The moon's gravitational pull actually slows the Earth's spin. So the Earth spins around the sun once every 24 hours, but if it wasn't for the moon, the Earth would actually spin much faster. Now, be a pro make an Earth day approximately eight hours. And there's a full 
few cool things the Earth does to the moon as well. As we've already talked, we have the gravitational pull on this side of the moon, causing it to be pulled more towards the Earth than this side back here, causing two distinctly different regions of the moon. The moon also has what's called moonquakes, which as you would assume are much like earthquakes. Except for earthquakes are caused by tectonic plate activity, while moonquakes are caused by the earth pulling on the moon, causing it to shake violently. We actually do have seismographs on the moon that we left during the Apollo missions, and we have detected earthquakes on the moon, or moonquakes on the moon. Gravitational science, there's something called a Roche limit. It defines the distance a orbiting object has to be to its home planet. Sadly, I can't do it correctly in the simulation, or at least I haven't found out a way to, instead of, but instead of crashing into the planet, the moon would get close, if the moon was to cross the Earth's Roche limit, the gravitational pull from the Earth would basically rip the moon to shreds. And then, you know, all the pieces of the moon would fall down to Earth and probably destroy all life on the planet. But luckily, the moon is actually slowly getting farther away from the Earth. So we don't have to worry about the moon getting close enough to the Earth's Roche limit to have any... Some scientists believe that the moon actually does not orbit the Earth, but the moon and Earth are twin planets orbiting a single point in space because of their gravitational differences. This point is what's known as the barycenter. This isn't the popular believed theory, it's just a theory I found and I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah, that will be a really cool concept if the moon was actually a planet and not I mean, a satellite. What we are looking at here is what is known as a total solar eclipse. I'm sure most of you have heard this before. Some people actually believe that the moon and the sun are the same size and that's why this happens. It's not even remotely close to the truth, but the reason this fantastic event happens is because the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but the sun is 400 times farther away from us than the moon is, and that sets up this total overlap of the moon and sun. This this right here, even in the vastness of space, is such a such a phenomenal event to have happen. The chances of this happening in our lifetime are so slim when you take into account every single factor that has to come to being to make this. It's it's just a miracle of science. Even the vastness of space, this is we probably live on one of the very few planets that will ever receive a solar eclipse like this. This is actually a simulation of the total solar eclipse on August 21st, 2017. For anybody who's interested. One day the Earth will no longer experience solar eclipses because the moon is moving farther away from our planet which means eventually the moon will not be large enough in our perspective to block out the sun. Unlike our planet Earth, the moon has nothing to protect it from asteroids. We have an atmosphere that most asteroids burn up in before they ever get a chance to strike the planet. The moon isn't so lucky. As you can see here, there are all kinds of craters on the moon. And these are caused by asteroids over the billions of years the moon has existed striking it. And as you can see, I mean, there's numerous amounts of them. They're giant. Some of these darker ones here, the dark spots are actually caused by former volcanic activity on the moon. So it's basically hardened lava you're seeing in the dark spots. Actually, the Apollo missions landed on one of these spots as well. These craters actually provide great protection from the environment and the harsh radiation and heat that the moon faces. And some of the craters, especially up here on the north and south poles of the moon, there is water that's frozen inside some of these craters. So water does exist on the moon. One thing that has baffled scientists and many theorists is the size of some of these craters. 
take this one for example, it's a much larger crater than some of these other ones over here, which in theory would mean it was struck by a much larger object. But the relative depth of all these craters are about the same, none of them are... Some of them aren't nearly as deep as they should be for the size of the object. That... That makes uh, scientists believe that there is a much harder surface underneath of what we see on the moon. That's led many theorists to believe, I actually read a couple cool ones, that the moon... That the reason the moon is like that is because it's hollow. So there's basically a metal structure underneath of the surface of the moon, and that's why, you know, this giant crater right here is only as deep as this small crater here. I, I'm not a scientist, I don't know if there's a scientific explanation for that. Just a cool theory I had found online at one point. No atmosphere to be found on the moon. The uh, boot prints from the 11 astronauts that have actually set foot on the moon are still up there, even to the 43 years since the last time we've been to the moon now. Even all these years later, there are still boot prints from the first man to walk on the moon up there, along with the flag he had planted. Because that lunar dust, there's nothing there to disturb it. There's no rain, there's no wind, there's no corrosion, there's... It's just there. It's said that the dust on the surface of the moon actually has a strong gunpowder smell to it. Interesting little tidbit there I'd learned while researching this video. I'm sure we all know about the moon landing. I'm, I'm not going to bother covering that in this video. You already know about that. That would be boring. The Apollo 14 mission in 1971 actually took 400 different tree seeds into the space and landed them on the moon. Obviously, we couldn't grow the seeds on the moon, but we have 400, approximate 400 trees on Earth that have been to space before. And on one of the Apollo missions, the astronauts took soil samples. We are not able to grow anything on the moon because of how dry it is, but those soil samples were brought back to Earth, and when we got the soil moist, we were actually able to grow with it. So apparently the soil on the moon is very fertile and could easily be used to grow crops if we could figure out how to get the soil wet enough to grow crops. Now the heartbreaking part of this video, something I didn't realize until I was doing research for it. Between all of the Apollo missions, all of the satellites we have sent up there, everything there's an approximate 200 tons of trash that humans have already left on the moon between backpacks you know just random stuff thrown out of the space shuttles humans have already left 200 tons of junk 400,000 pounds of waste on the moon and we've had 11 people walk on it we are destroying our home plane and we're already trying to destroy the next closest thing to us. I'm just kind of playing around with the simulation. <laughs> I've already destroyed it. Just trying to see what would happen if I had a bunch of moons orbiting each other, but apparently that didn't last too long. Oh, you can see a bunch of them about to collide down there. Look up in the sky and you see one moon up there. And you think to yourself, huh. I wonder what it would be like to have 400 moons up there. Let's find out. Nothing too crazy yet. Nothing too crazy. Just kind of give you a little backwards view there of it. 400 moons orbiting the Earth. Is that another Earth there? <laughs> I think they just put random uh, moons and stuff here. Let's increase this and see- oh, we already got some explosions. Let's see if the Earth can even survive- oh yeah, I don't know what the Earth is doing there. Yeah, you can see the moons that get too close to Earth being destroyed by the tidal forces, kind of the Roche effect there. Oh, yeah, Earth is destroyed. It only took three days for the Earth to- I mean- that's decent, you know, I figured it would take more, a lot less than three days for the Earth to get destroyed with 400 moons. 400 moons didn't work out too well. I mean, the Earth was destroyed in like three days. I think I found the solution to the problem, though. We stopped with not enough moons. So instead of 400 moons, I decided to get 4,000. Just kind of, kind of 
do a little zoom out here, maybe. <laughs> okay, don't be too harsh on my computer. It's running OBS too. Yeah, we're gonna zoom out here, just kind of show off what is going on. <laughs> <laughs> that is insane. Alright, so once the uh, lag catches up here, I'm gonna press play and we'll see how long the Earth lasts. If my computer can even play this. <laughs> Just crashed. Oh. We're it's doing something. We're two minutes in. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's gonna be able to do anything. Oh. Oh yeah, it crashed. Oh, oh well, that was instantaneous. Okay. I was about to say, so now we're going to figure out what happens when a black hole eats the moon, but yeah, it, it's just gone. It's just gone. Alright, so now we got a bunch of moons orbiting a black hole, so let's see what happens. Oh, there's a couple of them catching on fire. You see those two there in the center. What? Oh, oh, yeah, they're all gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it made a big boom. Oh, it's crazy, the power of a black hole. Oh, that was done in like 39 minutes. Like that, that was... Yeah, that was a minute every second. Is what that speed was, so that wasn't over the top or nothing. Alrighty, guys, I think that's gonna be the video. I just got one last, th one last thing I wanna show off here for you. We got the Earth and we got six moons, and I got it nailed this time. The Earth is gonna be fine, we got six moons, that's the perfect amount. Everything's gonna be cool. I also got these, that's our sun right there, and this is Spica. As you can see, it's a much larger than our sun is. Kinda, if you kinda wanna put things into perspective there. <laughs> but we're gonna press play on this simulation, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this, please let me know so I know to do more of these. I had a lot of fun recording and researching, learned a lot of cool things. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe down below. It'll really oh yeah, Earth is gone. Looks like we're getting sucked into the sun. Yeah, we're definitely getting sucked into the sun. Yeah, if you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe down below. That would really help me out. Oh, now we're all getting pulled into here. Yeah, Earth. Oh, there might be a few people left here. Looks like all the land's gone. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry that I destroyed the human race and everything in existence with black holes and giant stars, but <laughs> until next time guys, take care, thank you for watching.